Hello everybody, my name's Obi. Welcome to another Yonaha Media video. Today we are going to be talking about something that everyone pretty much knows is my favorite movie by now. Like if you don't know, have you even been watching the channel? We're going to look at why Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is not one of the, but the greatest Spider-Man movies of all time. The number one best Spider-Man movie, hands down. Now someone, some people may argue with me, but, 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 Obi, uh, No Way Home was better. Oh, but Obi, Spider-Man 2 is so much better. No. Mid compared to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Because Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is one of the greatest works of Spider-Man fiction to come into cinema. There's no other Spider-Man media even close to as good as Into the Spider-Verse. One of the best soundtracks, art styles, animation, cinema, stories, themes, Christ, Daniel, themes, characters, everything, everything in this movie is absolutely Wonderful. So let's get into it. Chapter 1. What makes a good Spider-Man movie? Spider-Man isn't an insanely complex character because Spider-Man is innately one of the more relatable characters, one of the more relatable superheroes we have. Uh, a teenager without insane amounts of money, living a double life of having a social life and trying to be Spider-Man. That's the beauty of Spider-Man. That's why he's so relatable. He's not that morally complex all the time. Now let's, let's get it out of the way, all the time. A good Spider-Man movie has to have certain qualifications to be pretty basically good Spider-Man movie. This is the staple that mostly everyone agrees upon. First part is with great power comes great responsibility. Obviously, this needs to be in like every single Spider-Man movie ever because I have never seen a Spider-Man movie that does not have this motif. Like what I, 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 I motif theme either way, it's always present in Spider-Man media. Whether it's just an episode in, in a series of for Spider-Man, or it's one moment in a, a game, or if it's just a brief theme in a movie, it's always there. It's always apparent. It's never left the character of Spider-Man. It's been a staple because every Spider-Man, no matter what universe, goes through a trying moment that tests their patience, their passion, their desire to do the right thing. It is a moment, maybe many moments that break them down, but I always get back up. Because you know what? No matter how many times I get hit, I always get back up. always triumphing against all odds and never breaks never gives up number two a cool swing every cool spider-man has a cool swing that's a number three be good there's generally not a lot that makes a spider-man medium really good because they generally just have to pass that threshold of good spider manning patent me and just good storytelling which brings us to the next chapter chapter two great storytelling into the spider-verse has such a unique way to tell its story between its comedy narration and the tiny details in every frame and world build but by far my favorite part of into the spider-verse is the character work and character interaction this movie knows who to develop and who to give screen time and what how much they should be developing these characters to at least get a grasp of who they are and what motivates them to do what they do my favorite character interaction is Miles' relationship with Peter B. Parker. It's like watching a distant parent come close to a broken and hurt and abandoned child. And watching these two grow and heal each other is honestly beautiful. It It's 
a, I'm a sucker for these types of character arcs. They, I, I've always wanted a healthy family dynamic. And so it always hits me when I see a broken and dysfunctional family-ish dynamic grow into a more healthy dynamic. And it, it, it's, it's beautiful. I think it's honestly one of the best things about Into the Spider-Verse. And it really shows that while Peter and Miles are growing, Miles is also mending his relationship with his father, which is also a beautiful part. And it really makes me feel things, especially projecting off towards Miles. Which brings us to the third chapter. Chapter 3. This movie made Miles my favorite. Now, before Miles pretty much showed up in anything other than comics, I wasn't super interested in him uh, or his stories at that point. Um, but watching the movie made me fall in love with the character of Miles Morales. Not only is my boy repping the sick J game, but he also has a great way to represent a minority of people without him falling to any racial stereotypes or tropes. This is also my favorite iter iteration of Miles. Uh, it gives him some things to be happy about because honestly, without Gwen or Peter B. Parker, the majority of this movie would probably be Miles just depressed and broken. Like, he would not catch a break. And that would be very sad to watch. Um, I also feel like this version of Miles is a lot more charming than the other iterations I've gotten of Miles. He's a kid who doesn't know what he's in for. He's having a vision of what a, being a superhero is like and then learning the downswing <laughs> of being a superhero, yet still learning to be their own hero and coming to save the day. Now, it does sound a little familiar, but Miles also just has an incredibly fleshed out character. Miles just has an incredibly fleshed out character. Everything he has going for him still makes him relatable as people know Peter Parker to be, what they know Spider-Man to be. Which brings me to the final chapter. Anyone can wear the mask. Now, this is my favorite theme throughout the movie, because it reminds me, along with everyone, that we all have great power that demands us to be responsible for our actions. Spider-Man isn't about bio-webbing or whatever fancy gadgets Spider-Man might use. Spider-Man has always been relatable, being chosen by random chance, because anyone could have been bitten by that spider. Anyone could be behind the mask. That's what makes Spider-Man so special. No matter who is under the mask, no matter what voice you hear, no matter what face is under that mask, anyone could wear it. This movie makes the audience feel like Spider-Man, not just showing us several different Spider-People. We could have that power to make a change. We just need to realize it and take a leap of faith. Thank you guys so much for watching another Yonaha Media video. I would like to thank our patrons, Harry Smith and Jason K. Thank you guys so much for supporting Yonaha Media. Um, we appreciate you. Mwah, mwah. Um, but thank you guys for watching another one of my videos, especially. I hope you guys go watch Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Get some popcorn. Get some friends. And just watch it. Peak cinema! But, yeah. Thank you guys for watching another video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. You guys can find me anywhere at Obi Cthulhu. And you can find me on twitch.tv slash Obi Cthulhu. Gotta throw my plug. Okay, thank you. Bye.